Hey there. So when I got Diane and I got all the scrap vinyl, a buddy of mine said he had a project for me. He wanted a rifle scabbard for his AK-47. So I didn't know really how to approach this because I've seen scabbards for le uh, lever guns before, but I'd never seen one, at least one that I liked for a modern sporting rifle, let's say. So I did some digging. I found a few images floating around the internet uh, of some leather work some guys had done. And I kind of came up with my own design and drafted it. If you would like a pattern, it's in the description below. It should fit most AKs because I sized it for his rifle with a little bit of leeway. And there's room for his light, which sticks out kind of far-ish. It's a, an enforce, I think. And it does fit, big reveal, my AK, which has an Ultimac, a Surefire, and then a Daniel Defense light mount, so you can kind of see how about how wide that is. His barrel is a little sticks out a little bit further because he has the uh, I think it's the egg breaker, egg beater, whatever you want to call it, muzzle device on there, so it sticks out I think about an inch further than mine. I'm not real sure about that, but there's plenty of extra space in this. So I used the heavy duty vinyl that I got along with some leftover seatbelt strap that I had from an earlier project and some one inch webbing for the enclosure with a snap. I opted for a snap instead of a buckle because I thought I would need some adjustment on this, but honestly, it should this, this space here should never have that much in it. So you're not gonna need to adjust that and AK stocks don't vary that much. And there is a little bit of play. So if you had a bigger stock in here, you could manhandle it in there and I figured that would be it'd be easier to deploy and just simpler all around uh, when I did that I did put a little piece of seat belt on the inside of this so that way it doesn't scratch up the rifle I also put a grommet on the inside of it right here as a weep hole I've thought about putting it in the end here but I didn't want to scratch up the muzzle of his rifle I don't think it would do too much to it but I figured better safe than sorry when I did the gusset on this, I also put in a strengthening piece here. You'll see all this in the assembly later in the video, but I figure I'd go over it now. And that does two things. One, it means that where the muzzle's gonna be rubbing on this thing and where it's probably gonna wear out the fastest, there's some extra protection there, but it also kinda helps it hold its shape. Because my biggest worry about using this vinyl was that when you had it on the horse, it wouldn't like stay open, so if you wanna drop your rifle in it, it would be difficult or problematic. But actually it holds its shape fairly well the way I did the seams on this. And again, I'll go, go over that more later. But I did the seams in this on a very very purposeful way so that it would help ho hold it some rigidity. Also, this binding that I used for the opening is actually more of this black tarp. So it's fairly stiff on its own, which does... It holds its shape fairly well. Uh, for attachment, I just put in three pieces of webbing and then... Uh, bar tacked them every three inches. This isn't quite pals, but I didn't think you needed a whole pals set up on the back of this. You just need a couple of points to tie down to the saddle. And this should get, leave a lot of options because I don't know what kind of saddle he's gonna be tying it to, but he should be able to mount it vertically or horizontally if you wanted or at an angle or however. One thing I would change if I do this again, and I did update my patterns, if you download it, it'll already be fixed, is the pattern actually works off a different, couple different variables, so I could size it to a new rifle relatively easily. When I did this part here, I put it at three inches, and in the new pattern, it takes whatever this measurement is here and divides it in half. That way, this lines up right in the center. I don't really think that's gonna be an issue, but it, just as an aesthetic thing, it, it bugs me, which would also mean you'd have a little more space on each of these, because then it spaces all the bar tacks at, two, at the middle here, which would be like two and a half inches on this pattern. The other thing that I change is the pattern has markings for where the webbing should go. I placed these two purposely, just kind of on look at where I thought you'd need. This one here on this particular model, or the prototype here, is directly in the center between the end and the front. And it's just a little bit off between these two other pieces of webbing. And again, I don't think it's gonna be a real issue when it comes to mounting this thing, but it looks off and it bugs me. So I, I modified the pattern so that it ends up right in the center of these two, wherever they might end up. The gusset goes around here, tapers from 
four inches down to two inches. Again, that's one to hold its shape, and two, I didn't I didn't want this thing overly baggy because I didn't want the rifle bouncing around in there. I think I've accomplished that fairly well. Because here it is, me just holding it, and rifle drops in there plenty easy. Throw your strap around, and there you go. So, without further ado, let's get into making this thing. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, as always, and let's get to it. The first thing I did was to print out and assemble my pattern. I messed up in that I made the margins smaller when I exported it in order to save paper and that ultimately ended up cutting off the grid that's used to assemble it so I had to kind of compare images to get this put together. I fixed the pattern file so the one you download should have the grid lines and be fairly easy to assemble. You'll also see that I cut some curved lines into the edges of the pattern. This is so that I can match lines at multiple points before I tape it down to get everything straight. The other thing you can do is if you have a light table you could use that or you could hold it up against a window on a sunshiny day but with a bigger pattern like this that could be problematic. Once everything's lined up and taped down I usually go ahead and tape the back side of the pattern as well just to give it some rigidity or longevity and then cut everything out. The next step is to trace your pattern out onto your vinyl. I end up using a regular number two lead pencil because nothing else seemed to work. I tried a magic marker and a colored pencil, but the magic marker just didn't seem to want to stick to the vinyl and the colored pencil is kind of waxy, so it didn't leave very much of a mark behind. If you had like a soapstone or a paint pen, that would probably work better here, or even chalk. I thought about using chalk, but I didn't know if it would give me a fine enough line to cut on. Thankfully, the pencil didn't work too bad. Another thing to note, when you're tracing out your scabbard sides, if your material has a right and a wrong side, make sure to flip it over so that way you have right sides on the outside and wrong sides on the inside. If you trace them both on the same side of the material, you'll end up with two rights or two lefts. And if that doesn't bother you or your material doesn't have a right side, wrong side, that doesn't matter. But if it does, just be aware. Once you have your pattern traced out, go ahead and cut it out and then rinse and repeat for the gusset and the gusset reinforcement. Next I went ahead and grabbed my webbing and I marked out what lengths of webbing I was going to need and then cut them out. This is again where I, as I said in the beginning of the video, I kind of messed up a little bit because I didn't have a center line point for my center webbing and I end up putting it between the ends of the scabbard so it's directly in the center as opposed to between the two lines of webbing so it looks a little off I think as far as function it'll work fine but it I said it it looks a little weird so in the pattern that you'll download there's three marks for where the webbing should go uh, the top and bottom are both I think one's three inches from the bottom the top is four and a half inches from the top and then the center strap is centered exactly between those two. So just follow the dotted line in the pattern and you should be okay. Another thing to remember after you cut your webbing is to take a lighter and just singe the edges so it doesn't fray. If you're using something that doesn't fray you don't need to worry about this step but I'm guessing most people will use webbing and it's kind of important. You'll have a stitch that runs across it later so I guess it, in the end product it won't matter but in the meantime it'll make your life a lot easier. Once everything is cut you can go ahead and start assembly. The first thing to do is to install the webbing. It's important to make sure this is on the back side of the scabbard. For this particular one it's going to be on the left side because my buddy's right-handed so I'm assuming he's going to mount his rifle on the right side of the horse and therefore the back side of the scabbard is the left. I just use some binder clips to hold this down and the nice thing about cutting your webbing to size first is I didn't really have to measure where it went because I could just find where the lengths line up properly. You can really see this on the two pieces that have a curved bottom. I just lined it up on there and sewed it down. If you want to be a little more accurate you could probably uh, measure this out but it seemed to work fine the way I did it. When I sewed these down because my machine doesn't have reverse I just went ahead and sewed all the way to one end, flipped it, sewed all the way back, flipped it and sewed all the way back, so three stitches. 
if you have a machine with zigzag, it would probably be better to do that, especially for the centers on these. I don't know if it was necessary to do that much stitching around the outside edge because this will get caught up in another edge later, but it worked out and it's a fairly short stitch so it's not that big a deal to go back and forth a couple times. The next step is to do the bar tacks down the webbing. I decided to these at three inches which was just kind of an arbitrary decision on what I thought would be useful for this kind of webbing. Like I said in the beginning of the video I modified the pattern to mark out every two and a half inches for the bar tacks or whatever half the distance of the shortest strap is. I think that'll look best and still give you what you need as far as modularity. Since my machine doesn't have zigzag, I just went back and forth a couple of times on each of these. If your machine does have zigzag, I highly recommend it for this because it'll make a stronger stitch. This next step is probably a little bit optional. I end up putting a weep hole on the back side of the scabbard just in case this didn't catch water somehow because this stuff is 100% waterproof as far as I know and the stitches uh, especially how they're done should be fairly waterproof as well so if you happen to be out in the rain and have this thing mounted vertically it's going to turn into a bucket pretty quick. I also opted to put this on the side just because I didn't want the muzzle getting scratched up if I put it in the very end so you can put it wherever you want just towards the bottom is best. To do this I just used a leather punch to punch a hole in there and I put a grommet to fit. I'm not sure what size grommet I end up using because I had some problems with my smaller ones not wanting to crush properly. I may need to get a new grommet tool since the one I have is pretty beat up. It's been used for a lot of things. Next I attached the gusset reinforcement to the gusset. I did this kind of the same way as I did the webbing. I found the spot where everything lined up perfectly and just basted it down. This is the first time I've ever used this basting tape but I think it's pretty legit stuff. I've seen a lot of other people use it in different videos and now I know why because when they come to putting some of these seams down it was pretty much invaluable. The one thing I would do differently if I did this again is I only sewed down the top and bottom of this reinforcement thinking that since it was going to get stitched over anyway there wasn't any point in doing the sides and I really regret that because when it came time to put this on the the sides of the scabbard I had a kind of a hard time with the two pieces moving around on each other so there's even one spot where it's a little thinner than I would like it as far as my seam allowance goes but it worked out in the end. Alright so we can finally start putting this thing together. I took the gusset and put it on there so that wrong sides are together. When you stitch it the first time the seam is going to be on the outside and I did this on purpose because I wanted to create kind of a French seam in order to give this a little more structure. I'm hoping with as thick as this vinyl is when you double it up on itself it does get pretty rigid so that's why there's if you look at the pattern there's a three quarter inch seam allowance because this first seam should be done at a quarter seam a quarter inch seam allowance or in my case I just followed along with the edge of my presser foot I did end up using some basing tape to go around the end of it just because that corner was kind of sharp and getting the vinyl to pucker properly wasn't working out with my clips if you had some stronger clips that might not be a bad idea either I have two that are a little bit bigger and harder to work with when I'm sewing but they were stronger and I did use those as well to hold it down this is also again where I said running a stitch all the way around your gusset reinforcement is really helpful another thing I should mention at this point when I cut my gusset I purposely left like an extra two inches on either end of it I did that because I wasn't 100% sure that the gusset was going to match up distance wise. If you want to leave yourself that leeway you can and then just cut off the extra when you're done. Just make sure you mark where the excess starts and stops when you go around because you again want, you want it so that with a taper from 4 inches down to 3 inches goes around the tip of the scabbard and then it's 2 inches all the way back. I think in the end it actually worked out almost perfectly as far as distance, so you shouldn't have to do this, but I just did it as a precaution. When it comes to sewing this first seam, like I said, you want to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance or as close to the edge as you can. The, we're going to be flipping this thing inside out and then sewing this seam again, so you want to make sure you have as it as close to the edge as possible so that when you do the half inch seam allowance on the next go around, it captures the raw edge.
Once the first side is done, then you just rinse and repeat the same processes to do the other side. After it's all sewed together, go ahead and flip it inside out. This was a little difficult with how thick this vinyl is, but it's completely doable. And once that's done, go ahead and clip the seams all the way around. I tried to kind of capture as much of the clip as I could, or as much of the seams as I could in the clip. So that way, because the clips are close to half an inch seam allowance, and that's what you'll sew this at. So go all the way around each side, and sew at a half inch seam allowance. Once I got everything flipped back around, I went ahead and grabbed my uh, Atlantic Firearms WVP AK just to see if it fit. It's not quite the same size as my buddy's uh, KVAR SLR 107, I believe, but it's close enough. I, I left room because he has a angled foregrip on his, so that's why there's more room in the front than there maybe necessarily needs to be, but that also leaves extra room in case the uh, light or four ends a little bit wider than I planned for here. Everything fits pretty well, so we'll move on to binding the opening. I had originally planned on using the two inch seat belt webbing to do the binding on this, but I didn't have quite enough to go all the way around. So I dug through my pile of scraps and I actually found this uh, strip of tarp that was fairly long and fairly narrow, so I decided that was going to be our binding. I just kind of eyeballed the amount that I would need and then added five or six inches to make sure I had enough. Then once I had that, I took the basting tape and I put it down the center of that strip and was able to fold over both sides. I put some binder clips on it, just kind of hold it because this binding tape is not really made for this vinyl and so it doesn't stick quite as well as it should. In fact, the piece that I cut off of this later, I went back and looked at it and it had popped off this center line but the basing tape held it long enough for me to get it on and sort it out. The other thing I did is that once it was done I took the basting tape and I put a little piece on the end so I could fold over each end to hide the raw edge. Once I had the binding all set up I went ahead and trimmed off the excess on the gussets and then proceeded to Again, fold. I already double folded the binding once to fold it again and clip it all the way around the opening on the scabbard. I had originally planned on overlapping the binding, but it was just too thick and bulky to really make that fit and look good. So what I ended up doing was I butted up the two folds right against each other, and that was where I put my beginning and ending seam and also a couple reinforcement seams there which I think in the end turned out to look really nice and should be plenty strong. Again, this is not necessarily necessary on this because this tarp I don't think should fray at all, but it makes it look a lot nicer. And the reason I was using, I'm going to use the seatbelt webbing was because I wanted a thicker, heavier binding that would help hold it open. And the tarp binding really worked out well for that because when you fold it over that many times, it's fairly stiff and does hold it open like you want it to. After I got probably every clip I own or very close to it going all the way around this binding, I went ahead and sewed it down as close to the inside edge as I could. I was really worried about making sure to catch both sides because I have a, I don't have a binding attachment and every time I do binding I always end up missing it somewhere and having to start over and again and just it's a lot of work. That's one thing where the rigidity of this uh, tarp binding actually worked out really well I think because it held its position really well and the binding tape also helped. If I had some narrower binding tape I probably would have put some of that on the inside edge as well just because well I'm kind of enamored with it now and it's just really really handy so I'm going to have to get some more. The last piece to assemble and install is the strap that holds the rifle in place. It probably wouldn't necessarily be needed if you mount this vertically because gravity should hold the rifle in pretty good but you get to bounce around on a horse that's gravity is not something to be trusted if you want to mount it horizontally you would definitely need this I didn't put this in the pattern because I didn't know where I was going to ultimately end up putting it I also I think I folded over an inch and then folded over two inches and did a box stitch around this that gave me plenty of material to put my snap through and it might have been a little too much. In the end, I think I should have only done two layers for the snap. But I like doing that when I install these straps because it gives you a little something more to hang on to. And by 
adding that extra layer, there's like a, it's only like the width of the strap, but it's just enough to get your hand under, so it makes it a little easier to pop it on and off of there. My camera battery died right around the time I was making the hole for this snap. What I ended up doing was going three inches from the opening and two inches down from the top seam. That seemed to work out pretty good because it doesn't need a whole lot of space right there and that strap gives you enough leeway if your stock is wider than that. For the other side of the snap, I end up just using my leather punch to put a hole directly in the center of the box stitch I made through the thickest part of my nylon webbing. I thought I might have made a mistake here because I had to really force the inside of the snap down to get it to, I guess, show through or go all the way through the strap. But once I started hammering it down, it worked out really well and there's a lot for that to grab onto now so it should be good and strong. For the opposite side I did the same thing for the snap. I measured three inches in from the opening and two inches down from the top and to make this simple and because I said I'm enamored with this basing tape and how well it works I just put a little square of basing tape down right where I wanted it to be and then I used another piece to fold over the an inch of the strap so that way I had uh, I could hide that raw edge and then stuck the whole thing down and just did a box stitch right over top of it. It worked out really slick. The last thing I did, which is probably wholly unnecessary, but again I'm worried about the rifle getting scratched up by the metal parts on the inside of the scabbard so I figured it doesn't hurt anything, was I took a piece of webbing that was two inches by two inches, put some basing tape on the back of it, and then I put that over top of the inside of the snap and then just did a stitch around the outside edge. I did run into an issue when I started this where my machine, the bobbin got messed up somehow. I'm, I've had this issue off and on where every so often I'll just lose bo all bobbin tension and it'll totally mess up the underside of my stitch. So if anybody knows why that's happening, please leave a comment down below because I'm still trying to sort it out. My best guess at this point is that if you don't hold on to the bobbin thread when it's going, at least on your first stitch, it'll cause issues. I also am wondering if my bobbin tension isn't a little bit loose because when sewing certain things I've not been able to get the top tension right on occasion I think it's because my bottom tension is just a little too loose. Once this piece is on your rifle scabbard for a modern sporting rifle is complete and you're ready to bug out on horseback this also worked out pretty well if you threw it on the side of a, one of those 4x4 mules or something like that. If you found this video helpful or informative, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, the pattern for this will be in the video description below. Thanks.